what's going on guys um, working on a, a, a 2JZ GE non-turbo uh, naturally aspirated um, Toyota Supra well sorry it's a it's a 2JZ GE turbo it's not 2JZ GTE so on, on, online they're referred to as as, uh, as NA dash T a little bit about the car uh, the guy that had it before my friend bought it my friend's the one that that uh, owns this owns a shop it's a auto it's an auto body shop he does a little bit of mechanic stuff but he, he, he calls me if he's if he's stuck and on this one he's stuck so um, in this video I'm just gonna talk about uh, before I get into the car really quick let's set the set the tone for the video I'm just gonna talk about uh, what not to do when you're turboing your non-turbo Supra and I guess you can gather from this what to expect if you're going to if you want to turbo your non-turbo Supra. I'm gonna talk about the differences between the engines, uh, the 2JZ GTE and the 2JZ GE. Um, and at least the differences that I know about. There could be other differences, so don't just take my word for it and say, hey, these are all the differences and that's it. No, I mean, there, there could be other differences that either I'm not talking about or I don't know. So um, I'm just gonna talk about what I know with the Supra, mix that in with, with what I know about tuning um, I went through the EFI University's uh, little crash course in, uh, in tuning school. Very informative. Um, love the stuff. So I, 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 eat, I eat and breathe tuning, I guess. Uh, my car, if you want to head it over to uh, look, out, look on the other videos of my car, I've got a 3S GTE 3rd Gen and a uh, 95 Toyota Celica GT. It's a GT4 engine in the, in the Celica GT that originally had the 2.2 liter 5SFE. Um, I have it parked outside. I'm not gonna show it because I, I'm in the process of putting the, the bumper. My friend here is gonna paint it for me helping out with uh, with, with his uh, with his Supra. Um, but anyway, head on over and, and look at that. Uh, I should have, in a couple weeks, I should have the front bumper and the hood painted on it. And I'm gonna clean everything up, redo my intake piping, but get it all nice and shiny. And uh, then make a make another video on just the overall everything I've done to the car. So that should be up in a couple weeks, hopefully. Um, but uh, back to this car. So this is a '93 Toyota Supra um, NA, which is referred to as 2JZ GE. Uh, the ways you can tell the differences between the 2JZ GE and 2JZ GTE engine, which this is actually a Lexus engine. So this is a Lexus GS300 engine. My, my friend swapped it out um, because the guy that had it before him blew that engine. Uh, I don't know if it's just from the, the, the NA engines have a higher compression ratio because it's NA. Uh, it doesn't have anything forcing a ton of air into the engine like, like turbos, like this one. Uh, it's got an aftermarket turbo put on it. So um, the... Where was I at? Oh yeah, so it's uh, 93 to 95 Toyota Supras. They have non-BBTI engines. BBTI is variable valve timing. It's, it's Toyota's uh, way to get more power out of uh, adjusting the camshafts. So it's variable valve timing. You adjust the valve timing by adjusting the camshafts uh, slightly during their during their rotations and revolution and whatnot. Um, so that's, uh, yeah. So this is a non-BBTI engine. Um, it's also in the GS, <clears throat> well, the GS300 engine is non-BVTI. This one's also non-BVTI because they're both within that 93 to 95 range. Um, <coughs> sorry. The uh, other differences between the non-turbo and the turbo. Um, NA engines have a distributor, uh, the, which is one of the reasons why you can't just take the, um, the turbo computer from uh, a 3S, not 3S, my engine's 3S GTE, uh, from a 2JZ GTE engine and plug it into a 2S GE uh, and to plug into this one. I can't just take the turbo ECU from the computer and plug it into this one because one, the injectors are different. These are 440cc injectors and the stock turbo um, injectors on the 2JZ GTE are 550. So there's, a, there's an injector difference. When there's an injector difference, the computer doesn't know. It's going to think that your injectors that are plugged in are 440s, but they're not. They're 550s. Or, sorry, reverse that. Um, you know what I mean. 
So that's one of the differences. Another one of the differences is like I was saying, uh, like I started saying earlier with the distributor, um, the non-turbo engine, the 2JZ GE has, uh, it has a distributor. So distributor, spark plug wires, ignition, co one ignition coil, and then here's the igniter way over here. Um, this guy's got like a little twin power HKS thing. Um, right it. <clears throat> um, the turbo Supras have three coils, which use a wasted spark setup. Now what a wasted spark setup is just really quick is, uh, you have once you, you have when, so there's going to be a spark plug wire coming off of one of the, uh, one of the coils. So, so instead of one coil here going through a distributor, you have three different coils set up on top of the engine. And each one of those three coils has a spark plug wire coming out of it, going into another cylinder. It may not be the one right beside it, but it could be. Um, now it goes into that cylinder. And uh, so when that ignition coil gets, uh, gets, gets the trigger, gets the little signal to fire, so the ignition, so the, the electrical field inside the coil collapses, um, which I'm not going to go into describe that could probably just confuse. I probably just blew some people's minds. They're like, what does he mean? Electrical field collapsing. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so when the electrical field collapses in the coil inside, uh, the, well, the ignition coil, um, it delivers a spark. Now it, when it delivers a spark, it delivers a spark to two cylinders. One of those cylinders doesn't need, it's need a spark. The one that's on the power stroke does need the spark. So it's, it's, uh, it's delivering, a, it's a wasted spark. There's a spark that's going to one of the cylinders and it'll get to that one whenever it gets to that in the, in the revolution cycle. So, you know, the engine keeps, keeps, uh, spinning, it gets around to that. And then that, that same ignition coil will fire again and it'll fire off, fire off the other one. So those don't need a distributor. They don't need one ignition coil that goes through the distributor and they don't need an igniter. Um, It'll either be a, a CDI controller, which, which means it'll have a, a, a CDI setup, or it'll be TCI. I think Toyota uses TCI coils. Now, there's a, that's a completely different look up CDI versus TCI stock coils. I'm not going to talk about that. There's a, there's a difference in how they're, um, how they're wired. I like TCI coils. Um, I'm not going to talk about why, but I prefer TCI coils. Um, it's, it's slightly different technology, but they both work the same way. Uh, kind of the same way. Well, what else? So things that are different. The head, from what I from what I've read about the head, the differences there's there's hardly any differences. I don't think there's any differences in the head of the NA Supra and the Turbo Supra. Um, I think like valve uh, valve clearance, all of that is the same. Um, but knowing Toyota, um, the head could be the head could be the same. The camshafts could be different. That was a, that was the issue in my car. Like I, uh, I changed out all that stuff because I'm actually using a non-turbo head that I have turbo internals inside of with you know beefier valve um, valve springs and all that stuff. And there's still there's still a difference in the head with the way that the fuel rail mounts up, um, with all that stuff. So that that's my car. I'm not, I'm not talking about this one right now. But back to this one between the uh, the GS300 and the 2JZ GTE or the 2JZ GE. In the Toyota and the 2JZ GTE, in uh, the Turbo Supras, there's a there's a difference in the strength of the um, the rod the uh, the piston rods. So the I've I've read that the Lexus rods are not as strong. They're they're not as beefy. Um, and then with the pistons, I think uh, you could actually, I think the rods are actually the same dimension. It's just the pistons are. Uh, uh, well, I mean, the rods are weaker. They're the same dimension, and the pistons they, they have a a different compression ratio. So, the engines are still both 3.0 liters. It doesn't really change the uh, like how much because I mean the rods. Pretty sure the rods are still the same. Uh, there's not a difference in bore. The bore differences are between like the 1JZ and the 2JZ. 1JZ is 2.5 liter. 2JZ is 3.0 liter. Um, and it doesn't go up in size. Like if there's a 3JZ GE, it's not going to be like a 3.5 liter. I mean, it could be, but it's not going to be like the uh, 5SFE is a 2.0 liter. The 4SF, the 4SFE that I don't think came to the U.S. is a 1.6, I think. And the 3S, 
GTE with a 3S uh, is 2.0 liter. Um, so the you know it's yeah. So I mean that's that's a different engine code. That's the that's Toyota's four cylinder. That's the one I have in my car. Uh, but I mean this thing's been this thing's been a nightmare. Like what I think this guy did that my friend bought it from. Um, I think because he had he had seven seven fifty cc RC engineering injectors, which are over here. He had these on it, which is kind of stupid. There's no way that the factory computer can control this and run um, can run those uh, those injectors. Um, you need at least a piggyback unit, and this doesn't have a piggyback. This doesn't have a piggyback unit. It's just a stock computer, stock NA computer. It's not the stock turbo computer. We've looked up the numbers. It's a stock NA computer. A stock turbo computer wouldn't even make the car run because it's not looking for a distributor. It's looking for um, three coils with wasted spark. So the little coil packs. Um, so I mean, uh, we're gonna have to. I don't know. I'm gonna have to tell my friend. Like, hey, you might have to buy a, a aftermarket computer for this, just so we can get it running. It runs. We we had it running earlier. Um, it smokes like crazy because the air fuel ratio is off. When you have a turbo that's piping more air into the engine, even though you have factory injectors, it's gonna smoke. Um, it's gonna it's gonna run. It's gonna run rich. Um, and the guy, so the, the guy's got all this aftermarket stuff done. Like he's got a Gretty. Uh, map sensor, a little Gretty boost control valve, twin power HKS. This is for the making the coil fire twice every time it, it wants to fire once, which which is going to be good on low RPM, but high RPM it really depends on the coil. You should have changed out the coil. Um, and different coils uh, have different like dwell times or like peak times and all that stuff. So like it, it's gonna the coil is gonna react differently. Um, I personally would not have done that on a stock coil. I would have gotten a better coil. The Mustang, uh, late 90s Mustang coils are ridiculously powerful. They're bigger. Um, I, don't, I, yeah, I would imagine you can probably wire it in, especially if you're running an aftermarket computer. Um, I would have done that. I would have got, got that coil and wired it in with uh, those things. They, they fire quick and they fire a hot spark. Um, other differences between the engines? The 2JZ GTE and the 2JZ, 2JZ GE. Uh, intake manifold is a visible difference. It's the intake manifold. The uh, 2JZ GTE has an inlet coming in here. 2J, I don't know what to do. Just knock something over. 2JZ GE has, as you can tell, the inlet that comes in there. Um, and this is a Lexus engine. That's the uh, that's the original Toyota engine. So I mean, there's there's those there's those differences, and that's. That's really everything I can uh, I can think of. This one still has a six-speed transmission. Um, uh, it doesn't have like the, the good like you know nine thousand dollar whatever seven thousand uh, dollar six-speed transmission made by uh or Gerka. It's a weird name. I forget. Gertrand. Gert. Gert. Gertrand. I don't know. Wait, look it up. Um, they're on eBay. Just look up Super Transmission, and you'll see the really expensive one. Like the one he was trying to—that's the one that he couldn't pronounce. Yeah, it's it's like a little six-letter six-letter word. Um, but when you're running the turbo on a, on a non-turbo car, you, one of the things you're gonna have to figure out where to do is like, okay, well, I, you know, I gotta run my map sensor. Which your map sensor, plug it into the same spot. If you if you change out your map sensor, however you turbo it, plug it into the same spot that Toyota has their map sensor. They put it in the spot where it's at for a reason. If you put it too far away from, say if you put it over here where the fuel pressure regulator goes, um, it's gonna get a different pressure than if you were to put it right in the middle. So you wanna put it right in the middle. That's where it needs to go, it's where it wants to go, it's where it's gonna get that accurate pressure reading. Um, diaphragms, they don't matter that much. It's just like, so like the diaphragm things, so like the fuel pressure regulator has got a diaphragm inside. Uh, what else would have a, so the diaphragm things, you can you can run off all these T valves. Your uh, your boost gauge, it's not going to be fully accurate, but I mean you can. I wouldn't put it on. I wouldn't share it with something that's got a uh, a diaphragm attached to it because this diaphragm is gonna it's gonna trick it a little bit. But, um, what else can I say about this? Uh, 
don't block off your EGR unless, well, I mean, when it's illegal. But uh, if you're trying to try to do it for performance, don't do it on a stock computer. That's it's it's a pretty dumb thing to do because you're under certain conditions, your your engine is going to tell the EGR system, hey, shut off, you know, or hey, turn on. And when it does that, it's going to change the air fuel ratio because it's expecting it to turn off and turn on. That's when your check engine light's going to come on because your uh, your gas mileage is going to be horrendous and and your hmm, interesting and your uh, um, that threw that threw me off. The noise threw me off. Your gas mileage is going to be bad, and your air fuel ratio is going to be off. So unless you're running an aftermarket computer, leave your EGR valve connected. Don't block. Don't put a block off plate on the. Uh, it's it's just going to hurt your performance if you have your stock computer running non-flashed. And this is a this is a super computer. Supra. It almost sounds like super computer. This is a Supra ECU. And it uses a. Uh, it uses what am I saying? It you, you can't flash it. Um, as far as I know, there hasn't been any Toyota ECUs that have that people have successfully flashed. Um, so get an aftermarket computer. I mean, that's that's the order that I would go. If this were my car and I were going to turbocharge it, um, first I would get an aftermarket computer. I mean, I could tune. I went through a tuning school, so I'd get an aftermarket computer. I'd bolt it up. I'd tune it, run it as an NA car, uh, naturally aspirated. Then I would change out. I would add the turbo. Run the turbo with the stock injectors. Um, if you want to dig into a big, you, know, you have a little bit more money before you put the turbo on, then go with the uh, change the compression ratio, have the bottom end built up, maybe have it bored out a little bit, get some larger pistons, um, forged rods, um, um, lower the compression ratio a little bit from what it was, um, put another head gasket in, <laughs> then turbocharge it. You turbocharge it, tune it again. Um, I would probably do those at the same time, but tune it again, and then uh, upgrade your fuel rail and uh, fuel injectors. So, and then do camshafts. You can do camshafts probably at any point during it, during that. So, you have a pretty beefy engine. Um, you need to do it all right. The uh, ignition coil stuff. Fatter coil, hotter spark. You could you can do that at any point during the during the upgrade. Uh, and it's not going to require a retune unless you go to uh, individual coils, three coils with the wasted spark setup, like I described earlier. But I mean, that, these are the, these are the differences between the engine, and you can see what it would take really to uh, like that's how I would upgrade. Um, that's how I would upgrade this car if it were mine. Now, what the guy, what I'm thinking that the guy did that sold my friend this car is with all the stuff that he had done to it, he had 770, 750cc injectors that replaced the 440 ones. He's got that turbo, you know, the twin power HKS thing, uh, Gretti boost control valve, Gretti map sensor. The fact that he's got the Gretti map sensor and he had the 750cc injectors means that he probably blew this engine running an aftermarket computer that was tuned. Um, that was tuned and then he blew the blew the engine he was like you know what i'm, I'm done with this i'm gonna get something else or, or whatever so he takes the computer out the aftermarket computer and he puts a stock one back in now hey the car doesn't run nobody's gonna know i'm gonna sell it to this guy and then i'm gonna use this computer on my next super that i buy it's it, it makes sense the guy probably did that there's no way you can run 750 cc in, uh, injectors on at least to blow an engine there's no way you can run 750cc injectors on a stock computer successfully unless it's either flashed, has a piggyback unit, or um, has a standalone. You can't flash these computers. I haven't seen any piggybacks for the Supra, although they, I don't really look up piggyback units because I don't like them. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's what... What was, I, what was I saying? I, I kind of just lost my train of thought, but I'm going to finish putting this back together. I decided I would stop and make a little video on what not to do. You can't change out your injectors on a stock computer. You can't put a, a turbocharger on a stock computer. You can do things like cold air intake. You can do things like that. 
stock computer, that's fine. Just don't let your air, your air temperature sensor hang out like all outside. It needs to sense the, the temperature of the air that's going into the engine. That's how, you're, that's how your engine's efficient. That's how you get power. Figure out some way to put that in that, that pipe. Um, so you need to know the air temperature that's going into the engine. If it's turbocharged, put it in a place where it's not going to get a heat soak. Like I would put it somewhere like around here, like, like somewhere about this far away from the engine where it's away from the heat of the engine. Um, but it's close enough to where you're going to get an accurate temperature reading while that, while that air goes in. So it's not going to get heat soak, meaning that engine from the heat, <laughs> the engine from the heat, meaning the engine from the heat, um, the heat from the engine doesn't, um, fog up the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, air pressure, the air, for, uh, the airflow sensor. So, um, Anyway, I hope this was informative enough. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Uh, go on over to my page. Check out the stuff. No, not my page. Go on over to my... I can't even think right now. Go over to my... Um, my... I have a little playlist in the... I'll put a playlist in the description of, uh, of my car. Things I've done to it. And, uh, yeah. I mean, hopefully this was informative. Hopefully this, you know, this fed your minds. And you're going to be like, I'm going to turbo my Supra now. Or I'm not gonna turbo my super now. So in either way, I, I really hope that it, it helped some uh, some guys out. Um, never owned a Supra. I would love to. I would even love to have this one. First thing I would do is pull out that engine and drop in a stock turbo one. Um, wire it up. Figure all that out. So, uh, like I said, hope this was informative. I hope you guys are having great days and I didn't like wreck somebody's party by making them think that, oh man, I bought this Supra and now I can't do anything to it. It's pretty much a GS300. Yeah, it's pretty much a GS300 in the fancy shell. So, but hey, it is a Supra and I would drive this, um, I would drive this in a heartbeat. So, because it's a Supra, man. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. If it's informative, um, sorry if I'm tired and not thinking straight uh yeah oh did i did i even talk about wiring the uh wiring the if you want to no. okay really quick so if you wanted to run a stock computer the stock supra turbo computer on this engine uh everything should plug into that little wire harness from what i from what i read everything like the connectors actually plug in you just have to run the wires 